Hi guys. The plan is to use the controller from this little toy car to control my robot spider that I just built. Now this toy car is sound activated. This is a microphone and when you flick your fingers or clap your hands it changes direction. Uh, I think we've got power on it. Yes. Hold that with one hand, turn the power on. Okay. So that works. So what I'm going to do is take it all apart, or at least take the receiver out, and rig it up so we can use it in the spider. Now at the moment the spider just has a single AA battery driving it and this one uses two AA batteries so I'm have to rig up a separate little battery box to put on the spider to give it the two AA batteries. What's more important to me at the moment is whether I can get this microphone out of the bodywork. It's hot glued in place. You need this because it's a rubbery thing and it insulates the microphone from the noises of the bodywork because otherwise it'll probably be triggering itself all the time. So I've got to try and get that out. When I need a little battery pack for a couple of AA batteries. I usually pinch them off of one of those little LED light sets. This is some that I've pinched in the past so that should do the job for me. It's even got an on off switch on it. So we'll desolder all this. I think I'll do is I'll use some of this wire to actually connect to the spider. You'll see why uh, later. That's the power in. Pay attention to that. It's not labelled positive and negative. But this one's the negative. That one's the positive. I did notice they've even got a little... I don't know if that's a resistor or a diode under there. Probably a resistor. Or maybe even an inductor. Right, power. How are we going to know which one's positive and negative out of this little lot? Sometimes they have one wire is copper coated and the other one's just silver coated. Otherwise I'll just have to measure it with a meter. That would be safest to measure it with a meter anyway, wouldn't it? Well, that's a bit of luck. That one's the positive. there before we go any further. And that hot glue on it, I think that's going to be a job and a half. 
I'll do that off screen. <laughs> I decided to go for the rather destructive method of actually cut it straight out of the bodywork. So, let's see if we can remember which was positive and negative. Well, that was a bit of a struggle, but I've tidied it up a bit. I managed to get the bit of plastic off the end there, so we've just got the rubberized microphone. I've wired up the existing motor temporarily. We've got the propeller on it just so you can see which way it turns. And I've got my two AA batteries here in the little battery pack. So we turn it on, it goes one way. So now we'll go and try that on the spider. I said I'd chosen that wire for a specific purpose. It's because I can push it into the springs where the battery normally connects on the spider. So just temporarily I'm leaving it all loose there. Looks to me like it works fine. I've tidied it up a bit. I'll give you a close up in a minute, but we'll just demonstrate it working. Looks like it works to me. So, close up. I'm using a LiPo battery, just a 1S, so 3.7 volts, or potentially 4.2 fully charged. So that's quite a bit more than the original 1.5 volt battery. But then we're carrying a little bit more weight. So we've got this sound activated receiver, got the microphone, big lump of hot glue holding that in place. I've wired the LiPo battery so it goes through the on off switch and then to the receiver. And then the motor is wired into the original motor connections there. And that's it. I'll put a link in the video description to the original build video, but I'm quite pleased with that. Well, you can see in the picture we can put rubber feet on it to help it go up slopes. I haven't done that at the moment because I don't need it on the table, but that's something else to think about. Job done.